First off, I'd like to uh, know how you got uh, started in politics. Was it something that you knew you always wanted to do one day, or did it just sort of happen? Yeah, I uh, never planned on being in politics. Um, I was always a policy person, administrator, running uh, programs, you know, whether it's at the First Nation level or at the tribal council level or even at the, you know, political territory organization level. So, you know, it, uh, it really, uh, you know, um, you know, when um, that opportunity arose back in early 2018, like, you know, I said no. <laughs> and it just uh, it came back and it just, uh, you know, I never thought I'd be here. And uh, it's been an honor to serve the people of Kiwetno. So I guess in that sense, like, why, why are you here now? And, and why did you get into, into, into the politics? I knew that, uh, you know, um, I think the real reason was that, um, you know, I uh, looked at uh, how the system of health care, the systems of health care, whether it's provincial or federally, I, I saw how it treated people. You know, a lot of people told me that it was broken. And, uh, you know, the more I looked at it, the more I saw uh, the needless deaths, the unnecessary suffering that was go that was happening, you know, uh, I knew that, uh, you know, we had to do more, you know, uh, you know, do more because, you know, when we talk about access to clean, tricky water, uh, you know, overcrowding the housing, you know, the infrastructure, you know, education, you know, uh, corrections, uh, you know, child welfare. And uh, when I, um, when I uh, was working in health, you know, uh, I had to think about all the uh, the social determinants of health uh, to bring it, to be able to bring those true telling stories that uh, people face on a daily basis. Because, you know, uh, you know, when I uh, I was able to kind of, you know, uh, flip it around, whereby it's not a broken system; it's it's working exactly the way it's designed, which is to harm people. And, I, and to take away the rights of the people that uh, are in those lands and those treaty territories where I come from. So that really, really, uh, you know, encouraged me. But also, uh, you know, some leaders that came to me and said, you know what, we need, we need to run. And Saul, it's, it's very clear that many Indigenous uh, politicians are part of the NDP party, including yourself. Um, do, do you have any explanation as to, as to why that might be? Um, I'm here for a reason, um, and I know uh, NDP was the first one that uh, actually uh, reached out to me at the beginning, in early uh, early um, um, 2018, and um, and at that time a lot of people were encouraging me to run for Liberals as well, and uh, you know we did speak for a while, and uh, you know it, uh, we never came to an agreement, and you know I wasn't gonna run. I was at a good place, uh, you know, in my work that I was doing at that time. Like, you know, I was working right beside uh, former National Chief Ovid Mercury, and, you know, why would I leave that place? And, you know, and also uh, Missionary Asking Nation Grand Chief at that time, uh, Alvin Fiddler, I was working with him on uh, transforming the healthcare system at that time. And and uh, so uh, I said no to NDP. Uh, Liberals said no to me. And uh, a lot of people reach out again and said you need to run and uh, so I'm here with the NDP and uh, and I think uh, uh, it fits a lot of uh, some of the uh, uh, the priorities uh, the issues uh, that we face as indigenous people and uh, and I think that uh, you know it's not I'm, I'm, you know it's not a perfect thing but it's uh, you know but uh, they've been very supportive. Uh, they are able to give me the voice, uh, you know, the, a place where I can, you know, be able to bring my voice, no matter what uh, policy approach that they may have on a certain thing. And I'm able to, you know, give me room to be able to, as a First Nations person, to be able to stand what I believe in and what I was taught in. 
Now, so you're no stranger to, to standing up and, and speaking out on, on certain issues. I know um, you, you had lived on very, very little uh, money and, and ate very basic food in, in, um, in support of and, and showing, bringing awareness to um, some of the issues in, in your area and as well as the, there was the swearing in uh, when you had been elected and with the whole queen thing. Um, so is, is that just, can you just sort of walk us through some of what you've done and, and maybe, you know, why you sort of speak up in a sense? I don't think, uh, you know, the system here, we have to understand the system that, uh, uh, this, you know, uh, the legislature here in Ontario, you know, was never built for First Nations people like me. And uh, I knew that coming in, that it was a, a, a colonial system. And uh, so I see it every day. I, uh, you know, walk by all the, you know, the, the paintings of uh, former, uh, you know, uh, people that have, you know, who are white people, right? And I think that, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you, uh, you know, you struggle <laughs> with some of the things that are happening in, in front of you. Uh, you see oppression in action. You see colonialism in action. And um, you see racism in action. And people are harmed in that way. And I remember, um, I remember one time, um, you know, uh, I'm in this, uh, you know, I, I got, uh, I'm trying to get this government to vote uh, in favor of to support uh, clean water on reserve to fund clean water. And uh, when they, you know, oppose it, when they vote against my motion, you know, you get frustrated. I thought, you know, it's a different Ontario. It's a different uh, Canada to be able to uh, share these truth telling stories about what happens on reserve. And I think uh, from that time uh, I uh, it was frustrating at that time and uh, I remember uh, you know uh, that I, I made a been made a commitment to myself you know you know <laughs> like say oh Canada God save the right. queen at that time God save the king when they sing that uh, the first Monday of each month when we're in session you know like that I would sit down for that and uh, you know, even uh, recently, as uh, you know, uh, as last uh, couple of months ago, they uh, they wanted us to um, you know um, they wanted us to uh, you know uh, uh, pledge our uh, allegiance, pledge again mm -hmm. <laughs> to the king after the queen passed away, and I chose not to. And um, you know, I think uh, uh, that's something. You know, those are some of the things I need to stand up for, and what we believe in. And, uh, you know, like, uh, because, uh, you know, even the residential school system, it, it's been a, you know, to be able to become a, a First Nation politician during a time of, you know, COVID, during a time of when that 215 were found in the come loops, you know, it's, it was very, very tough times, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I think uh, the system that is here was never, again, built for me. And I see how, you know, uh, how the system treats people and uh, you know we live in as first nations in a different ontario and i think to be able to bring that voice as a first nations person at the, at the provincial level is so important and uh, because uh, like again um, i'm here because um, i grew up on the land i grew up on uh, i was raised in uh, uh, on the land and uh, you know the land is so important to us because that's where the language identity the ways of life the teachings come from from the land and, uh, you know, when they look at uh, the Crown land, they're trying to, you know, uh, you know, when they talk about the development, they're going after the, the North because we're so rich up North. Mm -hmm. we're so rich in the, the, for, the forest, uh, the forest and also the, um, the forest and, uh, you know, the, we're so rich in the forests. We are so rich in uh, the, the lakes, the rivers. And uh, yet we see the uh, the poverty on the on the reserves. Uh, you know the clean drinking water. There's no. I have 14 long-term boil advisories in my writing. You know, like the lack of healthcare system that uh, is supposed to take care of people. It's a sickness system. Yeah. But also, I think uh, we are strong too, as well. Uh, you know, when we talk about the ways of life of who we are as First Nations people in the far northern Ontario. You know, like you see the identity, the languages that are very critical to of who we are. That's where the strength comes from. So that really encourages me uh, to be here, to be the voice of, of uh, you know, like uh, there's 124 members here in 
the provincial legislature and uh, I'm this one First Nation guy, so I, it's a unique, unique voice. Well, Saul, we're running a bit short on time, so I think we're gonna have, we are going to have to uh, cut the interview uh, short right about there. But I want to thank you for taking a few minutes um, out of your day and sharing some insight and, and some of your knowledge into uh, you know, your career and, and just politics in general. So, again, thank you, Miigwech, for all your time today, and uh, have a great rest of your, of, uh, your week. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for having me.